Nice. <laughs> the same way people trust vegetables and fruits from local farmers, they are now regarding butchers as artisans who are masters of their craft. Have you seen the trend get bigger over the years? Yes, people are tired of getting gypped and cheated out of their meat and getting sick. We met with butcher David Grant to find out what we need to know about buying meat. He started with an education on what some stores do with less than fresh beef. If there's old beef that didn't sell the previous day, ground beef, they'll add a little blood to it, regrind it. Now you have fresh ground beef for three more days. And there are other ways they keep the meat's color. Red number three, red number five, even carbon monoxide, which can keep meat colorful up to a year, even after it's spoiled. Network news reports have shown supermarkets pushing expiration dates out by more than a week, and only 20 states regulate date labeling at all. So why do supermarkets sell meats that they shouldn't? There's a lot of pressure in those environments to meet their numbers and their quotas. Butchers, we will take the loss. That your business means that much to us. David says another way grocery stores can trick you is by counterfeiting cuts. There's times that I've had bacon wrapped filet. Please tell me I'm having just a really great bacon cut filet. If it helps you sleep, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently meat glue, yes, meat glue, is used to pass cheap cuts off as high end. It's pretty much coagulated blood and bacteria that helps bind meat together. And once you roll it and refrigerate it, it looks like a sausage. So when you cut it, it looks perfectly like a filet. Beforehand, you can kind of tell because you can tear it apart. But once it's cooked, and so what happens when something like that happens? What can we do as consumers? Anything that says filet and it's $10 is too good to be true. <laughs> I, I'm just taking, I'm ingesting all of this. <laughs> the most counterfeited meat is hamburger. If you're getting the pre-made tubes, I don't know what's in it. They could be dairy cows. They can be cows that are so sick and you don't know what it is. They might have pieces of tongue and eyes in there that they don't have to put on the labels. Wow. The only way to know you're getting good hamburger is to ask the guy behind the counter to grind the meat in front of you. Number three, recognizing quality cuts. How do you know you're getting a, a not very good piece of meat? The fat will always tell you the truth. It's greenish yellow, it's slimy. Sometimes I'll find meat and I'll, I'll see brown spots on it. I'm like, that is terrible meat. Is that necessarily true? No, sometimes meat touches each other or sometimes it was sitting before it got wrapped so there's a little spot of brown, not too bad. Finally, the nose nose. If you walk in and it has a rancid, death odor, it shouldn't smell like that at all. If they're observing good sanitary practices, then when you come in, you'll just smell a meat shop with just the air conditioning, packaging. Most butchers pride themselves on quality meat and personalized service. And once we get you hooked, you're gonna come back. Sign me up! <laughs> and from ribeyes to fillets, which will get you the most bang for your buck? Head to thelisttv.com right now. We have the three top cuts of meat under $10. Getting to the meat of the matter is at the top of our list.